Okay. Hello, everybody. I think we're live. And uh, I'm Scott Shawcraft. I used to work at Google. I'm starting my own company called Chickadee Tech, and we're designing, well, me, uh, designing a system called PolyStack. The idea with PolyStack is that you can take multiple boards. Um, these are actually two mods. So you can take a base control board and then mods. Like this one is for a micro minimum OSD, and this one's for a variety of different receivers. It's called the receiver breakout board. What you can do is you can you can stack them on top of each other. So now I've got two. And if there was a control board on here, you'd be able to talk to both of the mods separately without having to worry about conflicts, which is really awesome. Hi, Spook. You can't see the cat. Kitty. Um, sorry for the false alarm about the video that was just happening. Uh, the cat in the background there, she just puked. Um, so I cleaned that up. So what we're doing today is um, finishing a video, well, not finishing, continuing a video series that I started long, long ago. Um, I haven't actually done that since May. I was just looking at that. But uh, the video series is about developing the first control board that's not explicitly for flight control. Um, this board is actually just a more generic uh, Arduino compatible board that we're working on. And it's based around the SAMD21, which is the same board that uh, the Arduino Zero ha or the same chip that the Arduino Zero has and the Adafruit M0 also has. So uh, way back in May, when I was working on this, uh, we got pretty far to the point where all of the traces had been routed. Um, we had figured out exactly like what goes where. And uh, you do. Um, and now all we need to do to finish it up, sorry, I'm watching cats, is to add um, add all the fiducials, the logos, and uh, any other silk screen that we want. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. And then the hope is that um, I'm keeping an eye on her <laughs> in case she's getting something. So don't eat that. She's probably hungry. She just threw up her whole breakfast. Um, too much detail. Uh, yeah, so all we need to do is silk screen, and then the hope is that we'll be able to order from Osh Park today um, as a way of prototyping everything. So uh, that's the goal. I'm actually going to run out of time. I actually got to hop in the shower and uh, do some stuff this afternoon. So it's possible that I won't get that far, but. Um, my goal is to capture basically all the work I do on this board uh, streaming, so that's what I'm going to do. So let's switch to the computer so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, we've got KiCad on the left here, and she's feeling better. Uh, and then this is the chat for it, for it. So if anybody jumps in, you'll be able to see what we're chatting about. Last time we had a few people watch, which was really cool. And uh, they ask some questions, and it's easier if you can see when I'm receiving them. So I'll leave that up there. Hopefully, we, get no, we don't get any spammers. And uh, first, I wanted to just do so. These are like the three. This is the KiCad project window, the schematic, and the um, PCB layout. So I just wanted to start by just glancing over the schematic again, uh, since it's been like two and a half months since I've actually done this, which is kind of crazy. And I, I got so close, I probably should have just finished it. But um, let's just see what we have here. So this is the SAMD21. This is the 48 pin, 48? 64 pin package. And uh, what we've done is we've done all of the supporting circuitry already. Um, that's like capacitor, isn't it? There's an inductor here to isolate the analog. Um, there's uh, different circoms that we've got here and all that sort of stuff. So um, all these names here, these black things, they say like what should be connected to what. Um, and we've got this six pin connector with two grounds on it. So we're going to want to 
label those. And then this is the polystack connector here where we can see we got timers, GPIO, spy stuff. And we've got reset circuitry and we've got the power circuitry, USB and some LEDs. So that's, um, that's all good. We've done the work for that. Let's just take a look here. So the way that this view works, all of the polystack boards kind of standardize with uh, this orientation because they're actually like derived from the same files. So polystack connector on the right, typically the front is the opposite of that. And then you get left and right um, from there. And uh, let's see. So it looks like we've added fiducials last time. So these dots actually looks there's a better view. So KiCad's really cool. You can get this 3D view. Um, and this is what we'll use a lot today, actually, because it's great for um, making sure that everything looks OK, like all the silk screen looks OK. So let's see. So we've got fiducials, which is cool. I could probably take that out of the title. Just call it silk screen and branding. So the next, the easiest thing that we're going to do that you need to do is you just need to move all of the silk screen. So um, because PolySAC is open source, I want people to be able to refer to the components as I would refer, refer to them. So like C2 is this capacitor, and C3 is this capacitor, and C9 is that capacitor. So all of these, um, these are called references, I think. All of these references, I want to leave on the board. Um, but obviously, having them hanging off the board or underneath the other components, um, here's the back of the board. Like, having all that every, every random place is not good. So I think uh, we'll just start off by moving all of that writing to a place where we can actually see it. And then another thing that I like to do is I also like to make sure that uh, the labels avoid the vias um, because sometimes the vias can cause uh, like the silk screen to be disjoint. So um, that's what I'm going to start with. To do that, I'm just going to select the front silk screen layer so it's a little bit more visible. And now I'm just Selecting here, and then I'm hitting M on the keyboard to move it. One thing to make sure is that um, if you do move it, make sure that you're moving it closer to the correct thing. I've had at least one case where I've accidentally like moved the label next to the wrong thing. And then, like, when you assemble it, you assemble it wrong. So this one. This one right there. Let's move this to the other side. I'm just leaving the orientation here. Um, this I'm going to actually make invisible because the ports I don't necessarily label because I'll, what I'll actually do is I'll label these again. Um, or I'll label these with, with other labels instead that are not reference labels. So up here. These ones, I think, I'll just make invisible. 
open. It's not really room up here to label them. Silk screen can go underneath, that's just fine. Underneath the bolt. Oh, someone is calling me. Hello? Yeah, it is. Yay, live streams! 
Um, sorry about that. Thanks for watching, or at least they were watching. I don't know if he is. Um, I'm helping a friend get internet installed because he hasn't moved up here yet. Um, so that's who I was on the phone with. Um, okay, so what I was doing is I was just rearranging all of the reference silkscreen um, on the M0 board um, so that we could read it. So uh, now that I've moved some of them, let's take a look at the 3D view again. So these look better. I wonder if we could fit one, two, three right here. These look good, this look good, looks good, looks good. And then I haven't done this back left part yet. Um, okay, so let's do the back left. See, the text is just a little too tall. We can make them smaller, but then it's harder to read. Let's just do that right here. And that's going to be a hole. So let's do R11 here. Is it good to take a phone call when you're live streaming? Wow, I really packed everything in here, didn't I? <laughs> Sam was, let me know what you want me to live stream. I'd be happy to show off something. No, let's turn this off. Yeah, having all these references can make the boards look cluttered, but it is really nice when you're debugging stuff. I bet if we made the R9 smaller, we could squeeze it in. That's one of the deceptive things about Like using a computer to design it all is because everything is so much bigger on the computer than it is in real life. It's kind of crazy. Like I, the first time I ordered it, I was like, like this board is like, that's the form factor of it. It's pretty small. Yeah, see, like it's one. This label is one millimeter high. So I was thinking. He's just a little guy. Boom. Yeah, that works. It's okay. It's all right. It's a little better. It's so empty, just traces everywhere. Side. 
See, that's what happens when you have vias where your labels are. Like to label my P's with the references at least. Scoop thing. This is really exciting. It's actually really easy though too, which is cool. Why am I making a duct around this one? So one of the steps after I do this is I will have to order all the parts to assemble onto the board. One thing I want to check is that somebody pointed out I shouldn't have traces underneath underneath the like where screws can go. Let's just see if we can wiggle. And a little bit more. So what I'm doing here is uh, X to select the wires and D for drag. And if you drag, oh, that was the thing I want. I want the opposite. So I think I actually have to delete these two. go and this purple or this blue boundary is still not super wide so this yellow boundary is eight millimeters I think Push and shove router is awesome. It's a little better. Oh, PCAD, you rock. Isn't that pretty? There we go. Now we got some more clearance. Don't want it too close. Okay, so let's see what where we're at. So all of our reference silk screen looks good. And we finally shifted traces where we want them. 
Um, so let's do logos. So there's a couple logos I like to put on uh, every board. One is the Chickadee logo, because it's made by Chickadee Tech. And the other is um, the open source hardware logo, because all of this is open source. So let's just see if we had those footprints loaded. Search for them. <sighs> yep. Yeah. I'm going to pick kind of a small one because I think, oh, not quite small enough. That would be a cool spot right there. It's actually just a little large. That's the two millimeter version. Let's see what else we've got. We got a teeny one. Maybe we should put a teeny one. I don't know if any of the boards have a teeny one on them. It's kind of a good spot though because it's right next to all the pin headers. I don't want to, I don't like to put a 10, but maybe I'll put one on the front, one on the back. Let's put another teeny, teeny tiny open source hardware logo. Like these are pin headers and this is the logo. They're in copper though, so that they should be easy to see. I really need something more in the middle. You know, maybe I'll just put the big ones and they'll just look weird with the spacers only. Go do that. too small. Maybe two longer ribbon. So these are logos that I've made based on vector files. I can do a separate video on that. Um, that looks better. What connector height are we going to do? Three millimeter? Two millimeter? Oh, I should have labeled that. So what I like to do is I like to have a label right here. It says how tall it, the connector is. I think it's three millimeter. Typically smaller than that. And you have to make sure that the label's below this yellow line here because that's the where the connector actually goes. And then we also want our poly stack. Using the bold, bold ones. Whoa, it's gigantic. Stupid search. And that usually goes in the middle here. I'm shifting. Um, 
Just open it all. So this one I don't want to move because it's if I move it over here I'll shrink I'll like shrink the uh, the ground right here so moving that would be bad so let me just take some more. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Maybe I'll just put a smaller Polystack logo. So that one's pretty large. Looks good though. This one's a 1.5. Okie dokie. And let's just label these to E3. I'm doing Command D to duplicate. E to edit. Two. Okay, and then let's also label ground. I'm going to actually raise everything up. If I really wanted to, I could make sure these are actually like the same. see what this looks like. They're quite bold. That's okay though. And then on the back, there's nothing. So what you can do is Command D and then F to flip.
I like to label things on both sides if I've got the room, because then if you're looking at it from the bottom, you still know what you're looking at. There we go. There's a dot that I usually put on here too, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Poly stack is there. Three millimeter. Open source chickadee. Labeled our inputs and outputs. The last thing. The last thing. I can't think of anything else. Oh, we need to label these pads. All the things that were labeled P something that I turned off the thing for. Not the fiducials, but the pads. So this one is different three volts. And I'm gonna make this smaller. And I'm copying it just because then I can copy the settings. This one's five volts. I don't know why it's not called five volts, but I'm pretty sure it's five volts. And this one's obviously ground. Um, so this board is a uh, good question. Um, so Polystack used to be called FlightStack, um, where the two base, base control boards always have a um, accelerometer and gyro, in this case the MPU 6000. Uh, but what I realized is that the ability to stack things like this um, is much better more generic and much more powerful than just for flight controllers. Um, for example, I had the the mod with the micro SD card and I was calling it a black box, but I realized, you know, it's the software that's making it a black box, not the hardware. Um, so what this board is, is it's a control board that's for more general robotics um, and other s sorts of electronics projects. Um, it's an IO, it's a it's an Arduino compatible uh, control board that you'll be able to reuse all of the um, existing mods with anyway. Um, and because it doesn't, it doesn't have STM32 on it and it doesn't have the accelerometer and gyro, it's actually gonna be uh, cheaper to buy. So it would be a really good development tool for other mods or other uses too. Um, so yeah, it's an Arduino compatible control board for polysec. Uh, not meant to fly, but um, meant to do other things like robots and stuff. Um, so that's what it is. I did a lot of the work um, back in the spring and like finally got prototypes of the other boards and like really made myself focus on that. So this is like the last hour of work before I send off a prototype for it. And then, you know, based on, based on how much I like it and how much, how many of the other polystack boards we sell, we could, this may see production in the future. But it's open source, so people who are interested in it, they can get this board before it's fully produced. So those are all the pads on the front side. Does that answer your question? Here we've got root, which I usually label B.
Um, I am going to be live streaming later this week, hopefully also, um, making a VTX mod, which should be really interesting. Um, people want more mods for things, and uh, the VTX could be really cool because we could use the FC to control what channel it's on. And I'm also, when I design that board, I also want to actually control the power to the VTX via the flight controller also, so that even if the flight controller can't turn off and on by itself, we'll, or the VTX can't turn off and on by itself, we can actually just like don't give it power, and then and then it won't broadcast. Which would be really cool. Um, so that should be coming later this week. I got the module already. I just this one was so close. I just I just wanted to finish it and get it sent off because the turnaround time for Osh Park, which is a great service, but it's a little slow, is like two to three weeks. Um, okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, boot and reset are labeled. And maybe I shouldn't be lazy. And I'll just do the dot on this as well. So I'm gonna launch. So what I'm doing is I'm opening the PCB editor for KiCad on its own so that I can open one of these other boards at the same time. So this is the F4 flight controller that I just opened. And um, I decided not to go. I want to bike when I go, and it's gonna rain. So yeah, okay. I'm streaming too, hun. Oh, are you talking? There's one person watching. Oops. You're welcome to be on it. I'm just letting you know. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mirror this because I like this setup. Distracted, but that's okay. Front silk screen. Well, that F3 is awfully inconvenient, but we can move it. Again. That looks good. Now we need to add our URL. Um, the URL's on there so that you can always figure out what version you got. And it's also the store page. Let's go 
Ja, Bingo. I think it's ready. So we labeled these outputs, we labeled our pads, and we've moved all of the reference silk screens so that we can read it. We've added company logo, open source logo, URL. Could put other logos down here, but that's not as interesting. We can reset. Oh, we did shift things a little bit. Looks like we didn't reflow the, yeah. So here you can see that this space is not a comp, or made, blah, 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 blah. Basically, you can hit B, and it will reflow the copper pour of the ground plane on the bottom. And so you can see that fits now. So we're going to save, and then that very, the very, 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 very... Actually, let's put the arrow, too. I like the arrow. Um, I'm sure I can copy from one thing to another. Did the aerial long ago. I should really make a footprint out of it. Oh, screw that. I'm gonna drop the arrow. Silk screen's easy to change later. This is just a prototype, so let's actually use this. So I think it looks good. We just need to run the rule check again. So what this is doing is it's making sure that the electrical connections that we laid out in the schematic are also available or are correctly implemented in the in the board itself and then it looked good so far but you also have to make sure you hit list unconnected because otherwise it won't warn you when things are unconnected uh, so that looks super good and uh, we're set so let's pull up Oshpark let's do it Nice thing about Oshpark is it's not super pricey. It takes a while. Get started. And they support KiCad now. Fire. When I was doing the other stuff, they didn't. So let's see how. Well, that works. M zero V one. Holly stack control board. That looks good. Can draw two layer. That's correct. Ten dollars ten cents for three of them. So now let's just take a look, make sure everything looks okay. The highest fidelity rendering ever. I think it's different than what it used to be then. Correct. Top layer. All right. Let's 
good. Approve an order. And I just do the normal, normal run. When you're doing this, also make sure that uh, all your tolerances and stuff match Oshpark, which is, I think, 6 mil traces and 6 mil clearance. But that's just a work. Let's do it. And uh, that's my address. Shipping. Free shipping. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Okay, you can't see what I'm doing here. I'll type in my credit card. Off screen here. I like started the stream and then Vin was on my lap, you know, and she like got off my lap and was like licking her lips and like, she's totally gonna puke. And so she made it out on the wood floor and then puked up all of her breakfast. <laughs> so I was like, stop the stream, clean up the puke, come back, funny. do it some more. Oops. Brilliant. She must have gotten into something. Okay. Looks good. So here is the confirmation. Everything is ordered, um, and it's awaiting panelization. So the process that Oshpark goes through is they'll take this design, put it on a larger panel um, for that includes a bunch of other designs, ship that off to their fabs, one of their fabs. The fab will get it back, they'll split it apart, and then they'll mail it back to you. And they'll email me when it gets to the when it's sent to fab and when it's received from fab. Um, and they should also have emailed me when they expect it to be back and stuff. So they, they give expected dates, but in my experience earlier this year and late last year, their expectations are um, they're worse than what they actually do. So. They actually perform better than what they tell you. If you're if you're thinking about doing uh, tiny and stuff, but anyway, so that's it. Um, we've taken the M zero board from concept to figuring out what pins um, go where on the polystack connector. We did all the schematic design, including the like support circuitry, and then from there we took that and made it. Uh, did all the layout. We did the layout in a two-layer board, which is awesome because two layers is cheaper. Um, at, at Oshpark, uh, like we're getting three of these boards for ten dollars. Um, if it was a four-layer board, it would be twice that, I think. Um, so two-layer boards is the way to go to make it cheaper. And uh, yeah, so we did silk screen and uh, and logos and stuff in this this iteration. So. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll continue to do this um, this series as we go along. So um, I actually started the bill of materials parts um, previously, and I'll finish those. Since I'm using um, Oshpark instead of Macrofab, I'll also create a spreadsheet with everything on it, and I'll do the order um, from DigiKey of all the parts. Um, I'm actually hoping to do a couple other prototypes. So basically, what I do is I 
like DigiKey gets back to me faster than Oshmark typically, so I will probably do two, you know, one or two more prototype designs before I actually do the DigiKey order, because I'm going to have to order parts for those other designs too. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, keep you posted on the live stream and uh, keep watching. It should be really fun. Uh, I think all of these prototype stage boards, I think I will put on the store. And I think there's a way on Oshpark to actually share the projects too. Um, so that'll be cool. Anyway, um, I'll talk with Joe when he's not when I'm not live streaming. So uh, thanks for watching. Keep an eye out. And uh, as always, if you want more information, you can email support at chickadee.tech. Um, visit chickadee.tech. Um, he's asking me. He doesn't realize I'm live streaming. Um, polystack.org will have polystack information. I haven't actually done that yet. That's one thing I should do maybe today. And uh, But you can go to github.com slash chickadee-tech slash polystack. And then in the wiki there, there's information also. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And um, there'll be more coming later this week on more prototyping stuff. Um, I'm also doing accounting, but I won't show that. Anyway, thanks again for watching.